Well, hello there. Welcome to Cardiff City Stadium. One bit of red left. Um, oh, you may see Ewan Roberts in the background there doing a, a video, <clears throat> which I guess is for BBC Wales. Um, lovely to see Ewan. Always lovely to see Ewan. Always lovely to see competitive football. Uh, always lovely to be back in the championship. Um, so, yeah, the season has kicked off. Uh, it is July. It is grey and horrible and rank and raining. Uh, it was not a summer's day. I did at least bring a raincoat this time. And uh, Norwich have begun this campaign with a defeat here at Cardiff. 1-0. Um, the goal was scored by Romain Sawyers. I think it may have taken a deflection. It was a long rage effort. Um, and it was from someone who doesn't normally score many goals. So says Dean Smith, who used to manage him at Brentford, of course. Um, and yeah, in truth, it was a goal out of the blue, kind of out of nothing, that came in a period of the game where Norwich probably stood off too much, were a bit too passive. <clears throat> and a brief period where Cardiff did actually stroke the ball around a little bit um, early in the second half. Probably out of keeping with the rest of the game, if I'm honest. And that proved enough to settle it um, now uh, you know this is the competitive stuff we can start to assess things properly now because this is competitive football so we can definitely do that um, I'm not about to completely overreact in terms of what this means because it's a long season there's lots of games to be played and likewise Norwich's championship starts have been a bit here miss um, I think they've Speaking to Chris Gorham, who had this, I think they've Norwich have only won their one out of their first competitive games of the last 21 seasons. Uh, that is in, in part because um, two years ago, three years ago, Norwich's first game was a cup game at Luton rather than the league game, which they won, won at Huddersfield. But they did win their first game in the championship two years ago. Um, they drew it four years ago and five years ago under Daniel Farker and both had to be, I think, coming from behind. So... You know, especially that Birmingham game. You know, Birmingham were, were bang average and had a bang average season, if not worse. Um, and on this evidence, I would have to say, you know, it's lovely to see Steve Morrison. He's got a great job here. And um, I'm sure he'll be working very hard with this group of players. And they've made a lot of changes this summer, Cardiff. Um, but if they, are, if they are anywhere near the top half of the table at the end of the season, I would be amazed. And I thought in the first half... Norwich were pretty much in control of it. They created some really good opportunities, if not chances, which is probably a recurring theme. Todd Campbell had the best one as Norwich won the ball high, which again, they did in the first half pretty well. Um, it was a great save, in fact, by Allsop and, and goal. Um, and, you know, one opportunity where Dimi Yanulis won the break, just has to roll the ball across the area and instead tries to fizz a ball in that's ahead of Sargent and, and Pookie and the chance goes. So it was a lot of that, really. Which again, on reflection in pre-season, was what we were watching. You know, Norwich didn't look coherent going forwards. And Dean Smith and Kenny McLean both said that um, in speaking to us after the game as well. So they all know that, but they've obviously got to find the answer and make sure that the answers that they find, they can actually put into practice on the pitch in games where we're all watching. So we can also see that they have found the answers. Because at the moment, and especially in the second half where... Uh, you know, Norwich didn't really create anything of note apart from hitting the bar, which they did do from a corner. And in fact, a couple of corners they did look threatening from Kenny McLean of, off, off Todd Cantwell's corner, struck the bar and that was well worked. But, you know, you've got to offer more than just from set piece and from open play. It was a struggle. Like Cardiff probably felt reasonably comfortable. And again, that would be a worry. But that is what they've got to work on and as the sharpness comes and over you know once we've got sort of four or five games out under the belts you need to start seeing that things are are developing in a much more positive way um, because there are two things Dean Smith has got to deal with that Daniel Farker didn't have to deal with two years ago uh, one is that when Norwich come to places like this there is a crowd I mean when Norwich came here and played Cardiff you know in an empty stadium it's a completely different proposition compared to when there's 19,000 people in here um, which referee Tim Robinson certainly felt it does change the dynamic hugely and it gives energy to, to the home team when they're still in the game um, and it, it, you sense that hopefully it'll be a benefit for Norwich at home but of course you know they, they, uh, they'll they need the crowd to be on their side to do that as well and, and encourage the crowd um, 
so that is going to be a massive difference compared to two years ago obviously um and the other one uh has escaped me i suppose oh no it's it's i suppose it's yeah it's a degree more baggage you know dean smith uh certainly with the crowd being in in the ground you know dean smith is going to have to deal with the with the baggage of last season things not being sort of probably fully rectified and just a very different relationship between the supporters and the players um so there's a lot really to contend with did was noticeable that there were a few norwich fans 1300 made the journey today there were a few leaving ahead of the full-time whistle um, which obviously says a bit in itself um and i thought yeah i mean in the first half the game was was the tempo was really slow in general or certainly vastly different to the premier league it just sort of struck me how different it was norwich looked technically superior they looked fitter they looked more mobile they looked physically stronger i do need to get some new headphones by the way and um and you looked at that in the first half and just thought well if norwich just keep playing at this level or you know find a few gears because they've obviously got them go and find them and and you'll you'll you know you'll 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 be fine i mean cardiff didn't really have a better gear necessarily they just had one moment that that proved um, a winnable game and there are things i you know i have concerns with you, know, you can bring on jordan hugo and and anel hernandez and, and both made a certainly anel when he came on was busy and his energy made a made a, an impact but you can't really get away from the fact that these two players are probably at the same level they have been for a number of seasons and if they are showing up positively does kind of mean that the level of the team has dropped you know the level of the team has to effectively you know be 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 greater than that if i'm if i'm being brutally honest so that's something i will be looking for um i thought there were some okay performances and i thought for a first return in an orange shirt for todd Cantwell, that was that was excellent i'm happy with that and would like to see more of that um it was a 4-2-3-1 essentially so todd was playing in the three behind tamu pukki who didn't have a lot to work with to be honest and and even dean smith said that they've got to get him more of the chances he wants so he's saying the right things he's aware of it obviously just based on 90 minutes of course milo rashidza started well but <clears throat> kind of got fouled out of the game i think he was fouled four times three times in the first four minutes and then he just sort of disappeared <clears throat> and either he's going to sit back and go i don't fancy this for a year <laughs> uh, or he's going to have to find uh, a way of, of dealing with that um Jakob Sørensen did okay but I would say today we saw why he hasn't been a regular shoe in for a midfield spot I think sometimes he's and it was the case with the Celtic goal actually the first the Celtic the second Celtic goal where so Sam McCallum got the criticism for the pass but <clears throat> Jakob Sørensen will, will come for the ball and if he doesn't then make it he's completely out of the game and he just overcommits. So I think with sometimes Jakob will sometimes overcommit, but also sometimes he won't be quick enough out to press. Um, and that was potentially, I'd have to see the goal back again, but potentially an issue with the goal. Um, you know, it's those decisions that are so important, especially in the championship where you need to win the ball back. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, they're probably the, mo- the, the, the key points in terms of performances. Um, we did have a big old melee in the second half, which was uh, which was fun and erratic and, and crazy. Uh, actually, I wasn't a big fan of Tim Robinson's refereeing performance today, but I would say that he got that he got that right. Uh, he got the right bookings, I think, in in that after a long chat with his with his line uh, with his assistants. Um, and yeah, so Norwich basically played against ten men when NG was sent off for a second yellow, which the second one looked harsh, but the first one was probably fair. <clears throat> that happened um, when Cardiff were already one up. Grant Handy got booked in the melee, which was probably fair, and he then got uh, a second yellow for uh, coming in the back of Harris, who'd come on, but I mean, he made the most of it. And the, the difference in level. I, I know why. I know why I get a bit wrapped up in championship games and why I end up annoying... Um, opposition fans a lot of the time because uh the the you know it does become a bit erratic and chaotic and um norwich have done very well in their two seasons here recently of having the quality to be able to control games and of course they didn't have the crowd involved two years ago either <clears throat> it's just not going to be like that this time they're going to have to find a way of of impacting games that probably doesn't involve the same level of control because i also don't think that's how norwich are going to play but they will try and be energetic and win the ball and things so so there we go uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, <coughs> Tammy Pookie did come off with a calf. 
issue uh, it's cramp Dean Smith said which would mean he'd be back next week um, but we will we will see if that's actually the case um, hopefully it is uh, no Gabriel Sara which I think was to be expected he'll get a bit longer to uh, to bend himself in back at Colney uh, Grant Hanley will obviously be suspended for the Wigan game at Carroll Road next weekend so we won't see him for that but it is only a one game ban I think for two yellows unless that's changed so he should be back for the Birmingham Cup game or the trip to Hull which are after those um, I think I've got that right anyway I might not have done uh, and hopefully I'm not sure if Ben Gibson will be fit actually so that might might make a, a, an interesting uh, situation for centre back come the Wigan game uh, and obviously Norwich put um, a bid in on um, for uh, Marcelino Nunez. Uh, we'll see how that progresses. Uh, I have no particular update. Um, the one thing I haven't said, Liam Gibbs made his senior debut today, uh, came on, that was reward for his pre-season efforts and, uh, and did well, did well. Uh, whether we should be in a position of hoping Liam Gibbs comes in and affects a game at this stage, I, I don't know, um, but great for him. I think that was due reward for how well he'd done in pre-season. And even today he came on <coughs> and did some really positive things. So. Uh, great for him long may that journey continue uh (coughs) new uh new headphones put it on i should have got them in the summer apologies uh i'm done i think um also i'm off for a week so um as soon as i've done what i need to do today uh i will be disappearing for a week i won't be at the weekend game so i will see you in about 11 10 9 days time or whatever it is um there will be something going out on The Athletic next week, which I think will be really interesting. So give that a read. Uh, let's hope uh, uh, Nunez gets done. And um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend. It's still the summer. So, you know, relax. It's early days. It doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, look after yourselves. Check out The Athletic. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye from Wales. <laughs>